Hey guys, so today I'm going to be looking at more gut feeling stories. So yeah, let's just get right into the video. My mum and grandpa were putting out a kiddie pool for my siblings and I in our backyard when we were little. My grandpa had set it up and my mum kept insisting that for some reason she felt like they should move it to a different spot. Thankfully they did and while we were all playing in the pool, a huge branch from a tree in our yard snapped and came crashing down exactly where the pool had originally been. Mum instincts man, they just know. Thank gosh for mums. In middle school, I was up late one night. Mum and my brother asleep, dad gone in business. I had let the dog out and when I went to go get him, I got a bad feeling like someone was out there. There wasn't really a reason to feel this way. It was just dark and I got spooked. So I put the chain lock up on the back door when we got back inside. Back then, we never locked our doors. A few minutes later, the dog is drinking by the back door and he suddenly stops and starts growling like a low grumble at the door. I was sitting where I could see the dog but not the door. Then I hear the door pull open and the chain lock catch. The dog started barking like crazy and I ran upstairs to wake my brother up. He went out and looked around but no one was there. I think the dog's barking scared them away but I don't know who it was and what would have happened if I hadn't locked the door. <gasps> That's freaking scary bro. This is why. See? Dogs would protect you. What's a cat gonna do? <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm nothing against cats. <laughs> Honestly, it's crazy how back then nobody locked the doors. Like, what the heck? My grandmother accidentally saved my mom's life by not allowing her to go to a sleepover when she was young. During the night, the father murdered his entire family and would likely have killed my mother had she been there. What is wrong with some people? He murdered his whole family. Why? Why? When my mother was in high school, she and her best friend were arguing over who was going to take a ride on the back of the guy friend's new motorcycle. My mum lost the argument and her friend got on the back of the motorcycle and rode away. She never saw them again because her friend and that guy were both killed in an accident during that ride. Wait, this wasn't in my gut feeling, it was just the guardian angel protecting them. Like, lose. You better lose. But damn, that's sad for the best friend and the guy though. Motorcycles. A dangerous. Years ago, I went into my garden at night after my husband had left for a road trip minutes before and saw a pair of sneakers in the dark in the gap between the fence and our house. I didn't think. I just said very loudly, what are you doing there? When he didn't reply, I shouted, get out of my garden. He muttered, yes, ma'am, and scuttled off. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> what? Yes, ma'am. Let me just take my leave. Also not thinking, I picked up a barbecue knife that happened to be right there. Went through the house to the front windows and saw him crash by my car in the driveway. I called the cops. They arrived. We discovered that someone, probably the same dude, had just broken into our neighbor's house and stolen a gun. The cops gave me a condescending talking about the risks of confronting a criminal, but I am convinced to this day that my instincts saved me from a life-altering and horrible experience. We humans are animals and one animal knows when another will fight like hell. Well, the police was like, you should have just stayed inside. But like, if she stayed inside, she probably would have died. Like, when they have not gotten into your house yet, there's a higher chance that they will just run away when you confront them. But if they're already in, they will probably just kill you. So like, yeah. We got an alarm system after that. And the guy came back several weeks later. I looked up to see him on our porch, about 20 feet from the sidewalk. Called the cops again. They sent a SWAT team this time and a helicopter. They got the guy. He was a serial rapist they've been looking for for years. Good thing they caught him. Jeez, that's scary. Ah! He kept coming back to the house. A friend's feeling saved me from my gut. I had just finished hosting a meeting. I swear it was productive. And a friend said, you don't look so good. I had just come off a weekend boat diving in the Red Sea and figured I was just tired. My friend said, nah man, I'm taking you to the doctor. The doctor at our clinic poked me a few times and said, take him to the ER and tell him it's his appendix. I was in surgery less than 90 minutes later. My surgeon said I was two to three hours from it blowing up. I lived alone and no one would have missed me until the next day. Wow, what a good friend. How did the friend know? Wow, that's crazy. It's actually a good thing that this person actually went to the doctors as well. Because I know a lot of people, if you tell them to go to the doctors, they'll just be like, nah, I'm okay. I'll just, I'll just take a nap, right? They will not come to the doctors with you. So yeah, this person did good. About two years ago, me and my dad loved going on night walks. It was something we've always done more or less every night. One night, however, as we were about halfway through our daily route, we got to an alleyway. 
Now, normally I've never thought anything of it, but something this night just told me not to walk through. I had a really bad feeling and I urged my dad to just go back home. He kept brushing it off and saying I was just scared of the dark and nothing was going to happen. After a couple of minutes of arguing, we finally turned back and walked home. Turns out about 20 minutes after we left, there was a completely random attack in that exact alleyway that left a poor young girl stabbed. Thankfully, not to death, but with life-changing injuries. I still dread to think what would have happened if we didn't walk back. That must have been tough to convince the dad because you know how dads are. You would tell them, I have a bad feeling about this and they'll always just be like, it's fine. You're just overreacting. So this person is amazing for being able to convince their dad to go back with them too. Because seriously, sometimes you have a gut feeling and then someone's like, it's nothing. So you just dismiss it. But good thing this person just kept with a gut feeling. Not me, but my mum. Going through a divorce, drinking heavily, fighting with my dad a lot. Really toxic environment. She started drinking one night, but something in her gut just wasn't feeling right. Not sick, but the alcohol just wasn't sitting right. She stopped drinking, went to bed, woke up to the house completely on fire. She made it out. Our pets did not. Has she been drinking like she usually did, a bottle or more per night? There's a strong chance she never would have woken up. Her ex-husband, my dad, set the fire in an attempt to kill her and cut ties. Dude! Some people are just psycho. Just cut ties. Why do you need to kill her? Just cut ties and never see her again. Jeez. I hope he's in prison for a long time. Seriously, that's attempted murder, right? My wife was going to go on a road trip with friends down to a bigger city for a concert. She had done this several times before. Friends were close friends of ours, but for some reason, I felt off about it that one day. I said to her, babe, I don't know why, and you can ignore me if you like, but I don't think you should go. I don't know why, but I feel like something is going to happen. She knows I never tell her not to do anything she wanted. It was out of the blue and out of character for me. So she decided to stay home and watch movies with me. About two hours later, after the rest of the crew left, we got a phone call that they had gotten into a severe accident. Two friends in the hospital and someone from the other vehicle dead on the scene. Had she gone along, she would have been sitting in the seat where they had been hit by the other driver and most likely killed. Someone somewhere somehow was warning me and I'm glad we both listened to it. That's freaking crazy. I guess when you're connected with someone so deeply, your gut feelings don't only just apply to you. It applies to the partner that you're connected with. Wow. I ended things with my emotionally manipulative ex who was 9 years my senior and who had pursued me when I was 19 years old. Bad situation all around, but I was lucky enough to see signs and have support from friends and family when I left. About 6 months later, he contacted me out of the blue saying he wanted to take me out for dinner for my birthday to show no hard feelings. I didn't want to, but I agreed because I was terrified of saying no. I'm not afraid of him anymore, but that was also why I hadn't blocked him. He scared me enough that I wanted to know if he was trying to get in contact with me rather than be unpleasantly surprised. I felt sick the whole day we were supposed to meet. Just a bad feeling, and I didn't know how to tell him I didn't want to see him. It ended up that he worked late that day, and he wasn't that late, but I jumped on the chance to say no worries. We'd just see each other another time. An hour later, he calls me angry, calling me a bitch. Then he said, word for word, you've ruined everything. We were supposed to get back together tonight. And my blood ran cold. I'm so glad I didn't go. I don't want to think what would have happened. Oh my gosh. Wow, that's scary. Honestly, don't see your ex anymore if you know they're controlling and manipulative. Alright, that's just not a good idea. Well, that's it for the video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Tell me in the comments down below what your thoughts are. And as always, thanks for watching. Hope you guys liked it and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.